do you have freezer food that looks like this? Just a bunch of sweet potatoes with ice chunks. Or maybe meat's another good example. Just, you know, sausage covered in ice crystals. And of course, this is called freezer burn. So what I want to talk about today is why does freezer burn happen and how can we prevent it? If most of us were to define freezer burn, you'd probably point and say, well, this ice, this is freezer burn. But from a more scientific perspective, freezer burn is actually the food surface drying out or becoming dehydrated. So in the freezer, what's happening is the food is losing water to the air in the freezer. And when this happens, a result is this ice or these ice crystals that most of us would label freezer burn. So what we see here is just the result of the food surface drying out in the freezer. And you might have noticed, you know, if you say, I'll just melt the ice to eat the food and it'll be fine, whatever. Usually the ice crystals ruin the texture of the food. They often can change the color as well. But even if you melt the ice crystal and then cook the food, you'll notice the texture is a little off. And that's because just forming these ice crystals starts to ruin the structure of the food. So food like us is made up of cells and as these ice crystals form and grow larger, they actually burst the food cells open. And so the more ice crystals they are, there are, the more they sort of break the food cells and ruin the structure and therefore texture of the food. So just having these crystals form is already starting to degrade the food. And none of these changes make the food unsafe to eat from a microbiological perspective. But as you probably know, it does sort of ruin the texture and make the food less enjoyable to eat. Okay, so now that we know freezer burn is really sort of the drying out of the food surface because the food's water wants to go into the freezer air, what sort of drives this reaction or why does freezer burn even happen? Well, here's the science. Freezer burn is spurred by temperature fluctuations in your freezer. So if you have ever been standing at the freezer with the door open until your mom yelled at you, I hate to tell you, but she was right. You should not just be standing with the freezer door open because this temperature fluctuation is horrible for the food. Now what happens if you're just standing with that freezer door open is the freezer temperature increases. And at these higher temperatures, these warmer temperatures, the air has a higher water vapor pressure. So warmer air can hold more water. Now to keep everyone sort of in equilibrium and happy, the water in food, which is ice, we're in the freezer, the ice in the food wants to go into the air. So the ice sublimates, that's a direct phase change from ice to water vapor. So the ice in the food turns into water vapor in the air at these higher temperatures. Now say you got yelled at, you close the freezer and it's starting to cool back down. It's starting to get to colder temperatures. Once the freezer is back to, you know, a normal cool temperature, the air has a lower water vapor pressure at these cold temperatures. So it, it doesn't want to keep all that water vapor it gained. So now at these low temperatures, the air wants to give the water back to the food. The problem is the, the water can't sort of diffuse back into its original position in the food. It can't sort of move all the way back into the food. All it can do is go to the food surface and it turns into ice there, which is why the most common sign of freezer burn is those ice crystals forming at the food surface. So freezer burn is really this sort of um, game of hot potato between the air and the food and they're just tossing these this water back and forth back and forth anytime the freezer goes through a temperature fluctuation. Now the funny thing about freezer burn is it's actually gotten more common and more common as we advanced our technology of freezers and that's because we now most of us probably have self defrosting or frost free freezers where back in the day, before this technology, 
people would have to go into their freezers and chip out any ice or frost buildup. Now, I can't remember doing that, but maybe some of you can remember having freezers like that. Now that most of us have self-defrosting freezers, what this means is there's never any ice buildup. We don't have to go in and physically remove that ice. And that's because these freezers have a heating coil in addition to the cooling coil. The bad news is every six to eight hours, these freezers go through a temperature fluctuation. So a couple times a day, these self-defrosting freezers will raise the temperature above freezing temperature. So it goes to a warmer temperature to melt any frost that may have be building up. Then that's great because we no longer have to chip that frost out. But the bad news is it's really bad for our food because with all these temperature fluctuations, many times a day, our food is becoming more and more freezer burned. All right, now that we know what freezer burn is, it will be easier to come up with ways to prevent it. So here are my best tricks to stop freezer burn. And the first major thing is you have to make sure to package and seal your food properly. For example, I found this in my friend's freezer and it it's, was just sitting wide open. So even if it's a resealable container, definitely seal it off. You don't want to make it easy for the food to lose moisture to the freezer air. Always seal your food. Another thing is that if you have something like this, this is peppers just in a Ziploc bag, you always want to splurge for the freezer bags or packaging that is meant to be in the freezer because usually that will be made of a material that is a good water barrier. So if you have packaging that is a good water barrier, it stops the, you know, the water in the food from leaving and getting into the air. So you want to have good packaging. You also want to be sure, so just look how much of this packaging is air. That's really bad. You don't want to put all this air so close to your food. It will make it really easy for this to become freezer burned. So at the very least, press all this air out before you seal the bag. If you have a vacuum sealer, definitely use that to get all the air out. Another thing is use the right size of container. So this is frozen pesto and this container is only half full. So the other half is air that is directly in contact with the food. That's really bad for freezer burn. Where you may have more commonly seen this is if you have ice cream, but it's, you know, it's half eaten you will get a bunch of ice crystals really quickly, a bunch of freezer burn, because you have a container that's half air right in contact with the food. So it gets really badly freezer burned. And one other thing, this packaging that you buy meat with in the grocery store, this is not really meant to be thrown in the freezer. If you want to throw meats like this in the freezer, which I know so many of us do, you want to repackage it so that it is much tighter. There's too much air all around this meat. And this material is not really meant to go in the freezer. It's not really protecting the food that much. So repackage your meats or anything that is not tightly wrapped. And one last thing, you just have to keep better track of the foods you have in the freezer and eat them in a timely manner. So the longer a food sits in that freezer, the more and more temper temperature fluctuation it goes through and it just becomes freezer burned and more freezer burned over time. And that's freezer burn or really just a drying out of the food surface as it's stored in the freezer. So no longer do I want to see this being thrown in the freezer, package this better. Um, something like this, make sure you push out all the air and you should be set to go. All right, I gotta get all this food back in the freezer. <laughs>